how this all came about is I went to a um, Board of Governors meeting um, with Western States in October, I think, to see my boyfriend, Bill Gore, get voted on to the Board of Governors. And during the meeting, uh, someone brought up doing this trophy and honoring Wendell Roby or the 500 mile horses. I don't remember exactly. I just knew Wendell Roby was part of it. And they were talking about doing a bronze and I had already done one bronze and I was working on a second one. And I offered to do the bronze for free um, if they would pay for my expenses and foundry costs. Um, they gave me more details and originally I was hoping it was going to be a horse going over Cougar Rock, a horse and rider, and I thought that would be so much fun to do. And then he gave me the picture of the uh, famous Wendell Roby photo of him giving his horse the water in the canteen. And um, I talked to Jeff Herton, and he had told me that I could either do a bas relief or a full size sculpture and asked me what I recommended. And in talking to Ronnie, we talked about doing a bas relief and doing a full size or doing a bust. And um, Jeff had recommended doing a bust, you know, just a partial figure. So Ronnie and I talked about a time frame, and she said, you know, I can do it, but you have to have the piece here on June 1st, which gave me like 31 days. So um, I worked my butt off and got it done. And it was the most wonderful experience I've, I've done artistically. I mean, I just was 13, 14 hour days, wake up really early in the morning and I don't get up early. And uh, I was up late at night and I pretty much just worked on that, fed my dogs and Bill took care of me and it was wonderful. Um, well, Diana came with me, came to me for, um, which all my clients do to, uh, cast a piece that she was commissioned for. Uh, it's called the Wendell Roby Trophy. And um, so she was commissioned and it will be to um, uh, take it from the very uh, beginning, which is the um, uh, mold making, casting, finish and patina. It's a very complicated process and it is the lost wax process, which is very old. Um, it's probably uh, back to the Bronze Age, over 6,000 years old. And uh, we're still fairly barbaric in our techniques in that uh, the only difference really is that I have uh, gas for my furnace and my kiln. Um, but the process is very complicated in that each process uh, has uh, many days and detailed. So a piece like Diana, Diana's is going to uh, commonly take about three weeks for the mold and about six to eight weeks to cast it, patina it, and have it prepared uh, for a gallery. What I learned being an artist, I graduated from Pasadena Art Center College of Design and it's a very difficult uh, four-year college. And I remember probably one of my favorite teachers, uh, Ted Youngkin, he was a perspective teacher. And he said that when you do a piece, any kind of artwork, you have to be accurate. You have to um, make sure that if you're gonna do a, a horse, let's say an Arabian, that it has to look like an Arabian if you're gonna call it an Arabian, it can't look like a quarter horse or an Appaloosa because someone out there is gonna know that it's wrong. And so that's um, where you have to have your research done. And I've been always pretty good about that and making sure that my art was accurate. And there was a fine line there where being you can be creative and not have accuracy and still have a beautiful piece. Or if you're gonna do something anatomically correct, it has to be correct. Or you're, you're not gonna convince people that it's good art. So for me, I spent a lot of time um, researching the project. I went to Western States, Terrell Reed, and I spent some time in the office and going through old, old photos and I picked the ones that I knew was gonna help. Um, Bill's partner, Rennie, had some old pictures of Wendell and 
um, between that and doing Google images, which I did, I would Google a horse's mouth smiling or you know showing teeth, and I got numerous photos of that just so I could see what that looked like. And canteens, the saddle um, was a, probably the hardest thing for me to figure out what he was riding in. Um, I set up Bill on a saddle in my living room and took photos of him um, holding a, a bottle and holding something else in his other hand because I wanted it to be accurate. So it was such a great process when I did the armature. I, that was also as anatomically correct as I could do for the horse, an Arabian, and also for a man figure. And um, so I did the armature and the skull and the hands and all that, and I measured everything. And um, when I was working on it, you know, you only see the, suit, the, the 2D um, photo. But you turn it a little bit, and it's like, okay, so the hand, you can see the hand like this, but what does it look like from this side, or what does it look from this side or upside down. And that, if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to look like mush. So, or just, it's going to look weird. People are going to look at it and say, well, why does that hand look like that? It doesn't look like a hand, at least from that angle. So my research on getting every side was as, as um, detailed as I could possibly get it. And then even probably the last day that I was working on it, I would turn it over and I'm like, oh, I need to fix that because I don't know what that looks like. And so I'd go and I'd research and so I don't know if that explains it. The challenges, uh, particularly on Diana, is that um, it's a very highly detailed piece. Um, so there are pieces in the original uh, clay, which is a, uh, it's a oil-based clay, which most sculptors sculpt in that's, that know they're going to go to bronze. And um, the detailed portions of it are so tiny, um, such as uh, portions of the saddle, tassels, reins, uh, the rope portions uh, could not be molded, so they'll have to be fabricated. Well. The, the, the actual sculpture of the Wendell Roby uh, was commissioned, um, they commissioned Diana to do that, and she came to me with the idea, and some sculptors will work from the original uh, idea, or uh, they'll work with photographs that have been given to them. And in Diana's case, there's a likeness uh, for Wendell Roby, which is very difficult for artists to do. And she did an amazing job on it in a very uh, short, limited time. Um, and uh, so that's one portion of it that will, it's my understanding, I really don't get too involved in the projects that they go to. My job is to produce the piece. So it's my understanding that uh, the Wendell Roby uh, sculpture is for the 100 mile ride. organization also requested medallions which uh, Diana sculpted separately beautiful job on those pieces and we are casting those pieces as well right today I started working on the medallion waxes they after the wax is poured there's edges and um, uh, imperfections because of the nature of the mold that need to be taken out and so I'm sanding all those edges so they're round again and later on this week, or actually next week, I'm going to be working on the wax for the window piece and working on the detail on that because the piece was so detailed that there's all these seams and edges and um, I, I don't know what they call them, but um, I think the, the gates or um, I don't know what Ronnie told them, um, described them as, but all that stuff needs to be taken out so you don't see it. And then at that point, they'll start um, 
making the slurry mold or di dipping it in the slurry to um, um, do the next process. It's very, very detailed. I'm actually shocked at how much, even, even when I delivered the piece, I didn't know all the processes that they have to go through. So Currently, um, after the oil-based sculpture was completed by Diana, uh, it takes about three weeks to produce that mold. And so currently we just completed that mold. We're pouring waxes now. And um, then it has to go through a process uh, to prepare it for uh, the pouring of the bronze. And we are expecting to pour that in metal uh, approximately the 12th or the 14th of July. Uh, to meet our finished deadline uh, of the July 30th date. You know, I just like to say that, uh, you know, I've worked with uh, many, many different artists through the years from really large monuments to really small gallery type pieces and for commissions such as, as this uh, Wendell Roby. Uh, event and um, Diana is very very talented and it's been really a joy to work with her because she uh, she does what the foundry asks her to do she does it in a timely manner um, she is very talented and um, we're, we're looking forward to this this piece and uh, other works by her the spectrum of what a foundry does can be anything from corporate to personal. Um, we, we cast for just an array of people, as well as myself, and that's really what precipitated uh, the foundry for me in doing my own sculptures and my frustration in going to foundries that um, were not always on time uh, and also the excellence in the castings that I personally look for. So we do really large monuments, um, as I said before, all the way down to almost jewelry size pieces. Um, but it is a process and it's a lot of hard work and um, it's just pure passion in here. That's what drives us. The medallions um, are the piece, uh, it's a little silver dollar piece, uh, bronze piece that's gonna be inscribed on the back, are given to horses, owners, um, that have finished have us 500, um, 500 miles or five times. And the, the bronze itself is going to be set on a um, base, and the names of these horses are going to go around the base, like the Tevis Cup and the Scripps and the, the Hagen Cup. So um, the medallion is just something that these owners can take home at, after Tevis. And there's, I think to date, there's about 45 retroactive horses, which is pretty amazing, you know, since the, the ride started. So that's what I'm working on today, sanding them. I'm just so excited to be a part of this, so I just feel so blessed and um, thank everybody that trusted me to do something that I had never done before to this extent. I'm, I'm pretty touched.